we will ask you to uh, turn off your camera and stay uh, muted during uh, this uh, info session uh, to listen to, to the speakers. Um, please be informed that uh, the session will be uh, recorded. So if you don't wish to be identified, please uh, edit your details to, to hide your name. And finally, um, we will have a question answer session at the end uh, to, rent, to interact with a, with, a, with a speaker and to allow you to ask your question. But if uh, during the different presentation you already have some questions, do not hesitate to use uh, the chat uh, specifying with uh, to whom uh, the question is intended. And so we can uh, bring your question at the end. Um, so as I was saying, just a quick introduction uh, to remind you of program today. Uh, we will start with, uh, with an intervention about uh, Vojex to present you this uh, project and the objective of uh, this uh, second open call that is the, the topic today. The presentation will be made by uh, Xenia Beltran uh, from the University uh, of uh, Politecna, Politecnica Madrid. Um, and who is the coordinator of uh, Vojex project. Then we will have the, the intervention and the presentation uh, from Paola Bonesu, um, who, who is director of Elif Lab uh, company. Uh, Elif Lab was uh, involved in the first round of uh, open call in Vojex, and she will be uh, sharing her experience regarding uh, uh, the project they have developed uh, during this open call. Then uh, we will um, present you the different challenges uh, that are included in this second open call. Uh, the technical partners are involved in this uh, webinar, so that's the occasion for you to, to ask your question. And uh, finally, we will have uh, a presentation by uh, Luisa Gonzalez uh, from Exis F6S about uh, the procedure to to apply and to um, to answer or uh, propose your application to this open call. Uh, we will have at the end this question uh, answer session. Um, so as I was saying, the occasion to interact and to to go over the the different uh, questions. So without further delay, I will uh, give the floor to uh, Xenia with a first, uh, first presentation about uh, Vortex and uh, the rationale of this open call. Xenia? Yes, hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me well? Yes. Thank you, Luisa. Thanks for giving the floor. Um, thank you, everybody, for participating in this um, webinar and session regarding our open calls. Um, the full details uh, regarding the open calls and whole, the whole process will be, as, as commented by Luisa, um, will be presented by F6X uh, at the end a little bit. But um, right now, we would like to to comment a little bit on our project on projects, okay? How we're doing? What is the process? What 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 is the project aims? Okay. Uh, and also our use cases as the open calls and the challenges of the open calls are quite used either to our um, architecture, that the one that we are developing at projects, or either at the use cases. So next, please, Luisa. What is projects? Um, Bojex is a project where we do a lot of experimentation in digital technologies, specifically for manufacturing and the construction sector, okay, although we are expanding it through the open calls, and where we would like uh, to actually create not only a favorable a favorable um, a space, okay, um, regarding business and and technology for for SMEs, okay, but we want uh, actually to act as a tractor or as a uh, as an experiment area for SMEs to develop uh, technologies related with, with human robot interaction in collaborative environments to support these domains. Uh, Voyage right now has twenty partners, okay, from eleven countries. And it's a project okay, that uh, will end at the end of uh, next year. Uh, so we have a year to go. And right now we are 
taking on board a second wave of SMEs to actually experiment with these technologies and link either with our architecture in a technical manner or actually to provide some uh, extended use cases to actually show, show how this technology can be used okay, in, 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 in SMEs or be adopted by SMEs as such. Um, the idea of, of having um, Vojex as such okay, uh, came, and, and this is our why, okay, uh, to create this kind of uh, innovative environments. So actually um, be able to, to improve, okay, not only the processes, but, the pro but or by improving the processes in the manufacturing domain, okay, to improve the products that are um, manufacture in, in this area or the processes that are given as a service so, such as it could be in the construction area. So the idea is to create some dyna uh, dynamization of the sector and see how by integrating robots okay, um, through the value chain in manufacturing or construction, then how we can support that these services or product, products could be uh, improved. Um, as commented, we're in our second uh, calls uh, as such, okay, and actually we're promoting uh, our open calls through the digital innovation hubs, okay, or the different members uh, um, that are in our advisory board, which are usually also innovation hubs as such. So our idea is to reach the SMEs for, for this purpose. Can you go next, please? Um, our idea and our main aim as such in, in Vojex, okay, um, we want to create new ways of uh, automation. It could be semi or fully automation task. And the idea is that by implementing or integrating robots in the processes, we support the human robot collaboration environment. So actually we support the automation either because it's an aim of an SME to do so or because this um, SME is part of a bigger value chain and actually produces for other uh, larger companies and actually then supports the overall idea or the overall approach, okay, that the large companies have. So you will see that no, in projects, okay, we only, we have not involved SMEs as part of our use cases, but also large companies that can bring and can be used, okay, as tractors for SMEs, okay. So actually the idea is to repurpose the scalability in functions and, project, and processes as such, okay, and actually get to a better precision, okay, or better way to manipulate the objects and devices during the manufacturing processes or actually to do it during the construction processes as such. So next one, please. Uh, our project uh, is focused in, in a robot provided by Robotnik. So as you can see, okay, it's mobile robots, okay, that they can go through different areas, um, either through the logistics or in the manufacturing environment as such. So the idea is that we can not only manipulate the different uh, objects, okay, at different levels, but also, okay, to improve, okay, the 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 way of moving our, and actually, uh, let's say, um, going or or supporting uh, efficiency and effectiveness, okay, in the different processes of manufacturing through all the value chain, meaning that is from the production stage, okay, to the logistic areas as as such. Next one, please. So coming back to our partners, okay, all, all the most uh, of the robotic part is provided by uh, by Robotnik as technological platform, okay. We have different uh, SMEs that also are supporting the technical developments as such and several other uh, universities and research areas as such that not only support the technical part, but also the way to, to, to reach the different um, uh, stakeholders that we want to reach as such. So in this case, besides the research centers, the university and the, the, the uh, SMEs, okay, that provide the, most of the technologies, uh, we have also some SMEs and mid-caps, okay, that are our, our use cases and actually two large companies, okay, to actually show how robotics and human-robot collaboration can be supported from um, their partners are, that are SMEs or how they are improved in their different uh, processes as such. Next one, please. 
one way that we use to get uh, to, to our stakeholders as such and the different uh, use cases and to reach, okay, what we are doing in, in projects, okay, are the digital innovation hubs for those that um, do not manage the term of digital innovation hubs, okay, they are organizations that are being uh, getting through Europe, which are gathering uh, not only uh, SMEs, but they are providing access for technical expertise and experimentation as such, okay? And actually then the SMEs can test before invest, which is linked to the concept of projects, which is experimentation for the different technologies that we want to, to put together. And actually our idea is that in our whole platform and in the whole ar architecture that we are developing from robots, okay? to the context of the IoT or the high level where uh, the production as such uh, is managed uh, as such. Um, we can see how to integrate the, the different areas, not only on technology, but also on the different services that can be provided. And the idea is to integrate these different developments through all our value chain and through our, all our, our architecture as such. Next one, please. So besides reaching the DIH, okay, to get the value chain and actually using the open calls to integrate new SMEs to our project, okay, we have uh, another uh, link, okay, which is STARS, and actually this is experimenting with artists as such. So there is another call that is coming next month where we are involving artists also to support uh, creativity and support um, design and support several areas where artists can um, help uh, us to 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 get innovation uh, further or in a different way, okay, to actually not only support uh, the technical part, but also the social part that has to do with adoption, which I'm going to comment a little bit in the next slides. Um, also, we have five use cases. Yes, go, okay. Uh, in these five use cases, okay, what we want, okay, is to to really reach the SMEs as such. The way we are doing is that we are doing some in nation, initial simulations using 3D reconstruction to actually have the context of the use cases as such, okay? So we can develop the perceptual on the, the, uh, understanding of the context as such okay? and actually see how the planning of the integration of robots can be done in the SMEs that are our use cases or the SMEs that are providing the technology, how we can integrate it in our platform to actually have it in a visual um, uh, manner. Besides that, we have work packages and tasks that support multimodal perception and sensing for the robots and for the grasping and for the manipulation. Uh, we're using machine learning uh, for the manip manipulation and actually supporting the human robot interaction at the different stages um, of where we are implementing and validating the technologies in the use cases. Um, the cyber physical environment well, that has to do with the IoT and the sensors, okay, really support our high level planning for automation. As some of the SMEs that are in these use cases, okay, have a small batches of production, so actually automation is not as easy and as continuous, a continuous process as it could be in the large companies as such. Besides that, Yes, mm -hmm. uh, all our use cases, okay, and supported by a task that has to do with ergonomics and safety as such. These are the five use cases, okay, that are and belong to different five domains, okay, in, in different domains in, in, in manufacturing or construction. So we have a use case right now that uh, um, that was initiated from projects. Um, I mean, all these use cases were initiated with projects product project, okay. And uh, our idea is that, for example, some of the challenges that are in this call, okay, could be added as use cases as, as the ones we're working. So in the area of polyurethane and, and actually textiles and viscoelastics, we have uh, PEMU from Hungary, okay, and the idea is manipulation of pillows. Um, it's uh, a mid-cap and, and, and medium uh, company as such, okay, and similar to OSI, which is in the area of electronics, and we are manipulating very fragile and small components, okay, and moving them from different areas to actually support the automation of the projects. And besides that, and the other um, on the other sides, okay, we have two large companies. One is Mercedes-Benz Truck, okay, supported by uh, DLR, 
uh, which they are providing a very large use case in the sense okay, that their use case uh, is the vision of a very large company on how they want to automate their process from now, which are data driven oriented. Okay, so in, in the use case as such, we have a robot that is provided by one of the SMEs that is provider of uh, uh, Mercedes um, Benz. And, and we see how what we want is to see how they want to integrate the robot, not only for their providers, but the data that is coming from the robot and from their process, how it will create value in Mercedes Benz. On the other side, the other big company is Acciona. It was a very large company, construction company in Spain. And the idea there is how, and we have some challenges linked to this use case, and is how uh, plastering and robots can be used in, in, in construction. And we have a, a, a use case for very small company, which is on crafts, okay? Um, those are artisans, and the idea is to see how also robots can play uh, a role, okay, in these quite very small companies and see what kind of process also could be automated, okay, or how human robot interaction can take place in that area. So, next, please. This is the way, for example, how this is example of PEMU, okay? Uh, this is the way we're simulating the different uh, contents and environments. We're doing this for all our use cases. So the idea is to see how not only more effective and efficient can be the robot use, okay? Or actually due to some limitations, like it could be, for example, a space, how it could be used, okay? In the best uh, way, Okay, it doesn't mean that maybe it's the most efficient manner, okay, from production point of view, but it creates a balance in between productions and human robot interaction as well. Next, please. As for the open calls, just to comment that the one we're launching are, uh, now is it, going to be explained later the process, okay? We're right now in the second open call. And just to let you know that, next, please. Besides this, Okay, we are going to be launching, okay, in the, at the beginning of the next month, okay, the other call that is related to artists. In this call, we, there is one challenge where we are also including artists as such, okay, in the area of design, if they would like to participate. But the idea to integrate artists, okay, in the next call as such, next please, is actually to have not only experimentation and technological area, but also in the in the way societal, okay, and collaborative learning can be used to better to be to better be integrated, okay, robots and with higher acceptances, okay, in, in companies such as SME or the domains where we are working and where we are expanding budgets as such. Next. So now I leave the floor to uh, Paola. Uh, Paola represents one of our first uh, uh, participants in the in the first uh, call. We have a great experience with participants in the first call, and we hope to have the same for the uh, second call. So welcome everybody that wants to participate in the second call of Vojex. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will try to share my screen now. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I'm probably having some problem because I cannot see it. Okay. Okay. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for uh, inviting me here today. I'm Paula Bonesu. I'm director at the Elif Lab, and today I will present to you our experience in the first Vojax Open Call, where we work on the challenge denominated navigation. Uh, first of all, uh, what is Elif Lab? We are a, a small company based in Italy. Uh, what we do is we develop uh, algorithms and uh, solutions based on data science and artificial intelligence. Uh, we use uh, mathematical models and uh, work on algorithms in order to improve and automate complex processes in uh, very different industries. 
Uh, about the challenge we worked uh, during the project's first open call, uh, as many of you uh, may be aware, uh, when you have a mobile robot into a, a dynamic environment, there's, you can face uh, multiple problems in order to have so safe and autonomous navigation. You have these problems at different stages in the in the process of having the the robot navigating the environment. First of all, you have um, a problem related to mapping because you may want to introduce robots into new or changing environments. You need to face problems related to localization. Sometimes you don't have the GPS, but you still want to have a robust and reliable localization. Of course, there is path planning. You want to reach a goal within an uh, indoor environment, and you need to do that in the most efficient uh, way to reach uh, this target navigation, uh, because you may need to uh, avoid moving on unexpected obstacles and manage the fact that the, the environment is uh, dynamical. Uh, perception, since you have different uh, sensors and you want to have uh, uh, certain measures and mm, you want to rely on these sensors you have on board your, your robot. And one other aspect we were already interested in was communication, because we want the robot to be able to communicate with the humans in an understandable and transparent way. So why did we decide to take part in the project's first open call? Uh, since we come not, we don't come from the, uh, we don't have a background in robotics, but we come from the world of artificial intelligence. Uh, we wanted to test some ideas we had on a new paradigm for artificial intelligence, and we thought that the best way to do that was to apply artificial intelligence to a robot that has to interact with a, with a complex environment. So we chose to apply to this first project open call because we saw the advantage of being able to interact with companies that uh, differently from us, have a strong technical and business experience in robotics. And in this case, we work with uh, Robotnik on our solution. Uh, of course, I think the best way to test a new approach in artificial intelligence is to test a new idea is to solve a specific problem. So we, we appreciated the fact that we were able to work on a specific target and in this way uh, test uh, this new paradigm we were working on. And of course, as we are a small SME, uh, the idea to be able to fund our uh, research and development activities uh, was very uh, precious for us. So the, the goal was for us having a complete framework by the end uh, of the project. So uh, to continue after the project to build on this framework, both in technical and in business terms. So very briefly, what we did during this six months program, uh, first of all, we created a virtual environment using uh, WeBots, where we placed different obstacles and we recreated the model of the robot. We worked on the robot Nikaidos. We tested different mapping and localization algorithms. Uh, some of them used GPS, some of them used LIDARs. We also used IMU and template matching. And we worked on the path creation algorithm. Uh, in this way, we were able uh, to achieve the, the goals within the environment with 100% uh, of accuracy, uh, meaning that the robot is always uh, and close to the, to the target, not far than uh, four centimeters. Uh, as said, we mainly wanted to test this innovative approach. So uh, what the differentiates us uh, from uh, solutions already on the market is that behind this, uh, this robot moving in, in within the environment, we have a dynamic semantic reasoner. So the decisions are made on concepts and then re-translated into low-level commands that are uh, used by the robot. This assures light communication, transparency, and also this makes us uh, able to uh, adapt uh, the solution to very different robots. And at this level, we have also the natural sensor fusion, uh, so we can gather data from different sensors and have them uh, translated into concepts in order to make decisions that are sent to the robot. Uh, we also have a symbolic graph map. Of course, we have the 2D metric map, but we were also able to create a more abstract map, which allows us uh, to have lighter processing, uh, make uh, faster decisions, and also introduce at uh, this abstract level information that the user may already have uh, about the, the environment. 
so the outcomes at the end of the project in June uh, 22, uh, 2022, uh, we had a complete framework, which is also very light. Uh, Gene zone is less than 200 megabyte insights. Uh, it was integrated with ROS1 through a bridge. This was also a suggestion we, uh, uh, that came from uh, our partners, uh, Robotnik. And we also developed different monitoring and management interfaces for the user in order to understand what the robot is doing and uh, give uh, the robot uh, some comments. So, as said, our idea was at the end of the project having uh, a framework on which we call, could continue working. So, after June, we worked on the integration with ROS2 at this time. We also introduced a component related to video analytics, which was not present uh, during the project. In this way, we can uh, detect the objects directly on the, on the hardware, which is on board on the, of the robot. We are working on a 3D visualization that allows the, the user understand the, the robot, uh, the point of view of the robot. And we are also working on a novel semantic reconstruction, uh, even starting from uh, 2D LIDAR maps. So we only have uh, points <laughs> generated by this LIDAR. We are able to uh, probabilistically infer uh, objects and wall within an uh, indoor environment. We are experimenting with audio acquisition for mapping, so we are very much working very different uh, uh, on very different uh, way to map and having the robot safely navigate the, the environment. On the um, less technical but <laughs> business side, we are testing it also on other robotic platforms. As said, during the project, we, we worked on the Robotnik Kairos. Right now, we are also testing it on our own hardware and on our Mir platform. We are uh, in talks with several companies that are interested in uh, testing our solution. They are they mainly are uh, hardware producers or uh, robot sellers. And uh, next week, I will be in Brussels as a finalist of uh, leaders, women in overtures in manufacturing, presenting this, uh, this project. So why applying to the project second call? Unfortunately, we can't. <laughs> Uh, but from my point of view, uh, most important things are, are that you will have access to, to a network, which means you will be able to get to know the point of view of very different stakeholders, meaning that you will let, will understand their problems, the technologies they are using and the application they would like to, to develop. It's also possible you will see synergies with other projects, with other within projects. You, in the image, you can see uh, the logos of the other winners of the first open call. Uh, of course, since we are all working in robotics and in providing solutions to, to the clients, it's, it's very interesting to understand uh, what also the other companies are working on. Uh, of course, working in, um, in a project like this one can give you visibility and also help you validate the, the concepts behind uh, your, your solution. And as said before, uh, especially for uh, small companies, uh, the possibility to fund your research and development activities, I think, is uh, is very important. So uh, thank you very much. You can contact me by uh, email or on LinkedIn if you want to know more about our project or our involvement in a first project open code. Thanks. Thank you very much, Paola, for this uh, very nice presentation. Um, I will uh, continue uh, taking back the, the, the screen, uh, sharing the challenges for the audience. Uh, please do not forget to um, add your question in the chat. We will have a dedicated session afterwards to, to answer, uh, answer them. So, um, we will continue with the presentation of uh, the six challenges that are now included in the second open call uh, of uh, projects. So I will ask uh, the challenge leader to to join me and uh, present each uh, of uh, the challenge. So we will start with Santiago Mancho. 
uh, who will present the first challenge on warehouse management and um, the second on robotic for logistics supporting and demonstrating capabilities uh, on real operation. Then we will continue with Slavomir uh, Kuchalski, sorry for, for the, the name, uh, challenge three um, on graphical overlay design for core EU. Uh, then we will have uh, Miguel Cantero, who will be presenting the challenge four and five, challenge four on clean rooms and uh, clean environment, and challenge five on metrology and reconstruction. And then finally, Okan uh, Otuz, who will present the challenge six on machine learning based on material characterization. So, Santi, for the first challenge, are you here? Santi, we cannot hear you. Uh, hello, yes. No, yes. can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so hello, hello to this uh, uh, the challenge one, and also I will present the challenge two. You will see that challenge one and challenge two are uh, both re related. So um, the the main goal of the challenge one is the is to adapt the budget ecosystem to a new domain. So as Shania uh, mentioned uh, mentioned before, so budgets it's uh, mainly the use cases that we have it's are, are devoted to manufacturing and construction. So we would like to test also in the logistic uh, domain. So the the scenario it's a, a road that uh, it's in a warehouse. And uh, this robot is requested to, to fetch uh, an item by an operator by doing a, a gesture. So, uh, more specifically, the, the, the steps that we foresee that uh, could have this challenge is the, the detection, this, this in it, uh, the detection of this, of this request uh, gesture made, made, by, uh, sorry, made by the operator. Uh, so don't worry about the gestures because we will provide a catalog of gestures. The only that you need to do is to match this request gesture with the, with the, with this catalog of gestures that we provide. So uh, also the second step is that the operator indicates the item to be retrieved. Uh, here um, we uh, we get uh, free free solutions. Uh, you can you can propose a solution that you want uh, here. Uh, maybe it's a tablet, a computer vision, any any other. So um, you are free to propose any interface to communicate with the, the robot, the item that is needed to fetch. So once the robot uh, knows the target, uh, the robot knows the target position inside the warehouse. Because let's say that we have a table that says, okay, this is the object, and this object is located in this position of the of the warehouse. So the robot navigates in real time, avoiding obstacles uh, within this uh, this uh, uh, warehouse. So um, the navigation and the robotic platform will be provided in challenge two. If this is what uh, I would mention that the, there is a relation between challenge one and challenge two. Challenge one will be more related to software, and challenge two will be related more to to, to the hardware in which we will uh, uh, install this, this, this software. So uh, once the robot uh, reaches the, the, the correct uh, self, so, uh, so the, the, the robot needs to identify uh, the, the item. So here we also, we, we get the, the, the freedom to, that you propose uh, whatever technology you means. RFID tax headset uh, computer vision because computer vision is one of the technology that we are we have already implemented in projects. So we will like to test other technologies like, like RFID tax or whatever you can propose. So um, the next steps, the next step, sorry, it's to fetch the item of the self and place it in a box located in the robot. 
and uh, last step is the navigation to the back to the to the operator so the main challenge that we foresee here is that uh, are uh, uh, for for a challenge so the first one is detecting the this uh, this search or in a gesture made by the human operator and map it into a catalog of gestures the second is to test the new interfaces of communication for providing information about the item uh, the next one will be the how to detect that the that the item that it's on the on the shelf is the item that you are uh, looking for and the fourth is the fetch the item uh, and, and place it into the into the box that uh, we we will locate on the robot on the, on the robot so the 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 indicated budget for this uh, challenge it's uh, eight uh, eight thousand uh, 80,000 euros, so 40,000 uh, is for development, 20k uh, uh, euros are for the equipment, thank you uh, final for, for the final demo, and the final 10,000 uh, euros for the integration with the challenge too. So the duration of this challenge is about uh, six months, plus also we need to uh, we need to test with the challenge two, the coordinated challenge two. So we foresee another two months. So here the main constraint is that the only SMEs and mid caps are eligible for this uh, challenge. Okay. Yeah. So so I can I can move. Uh, this is the, the the end of the challenge one. So. I can move also to the challenge uh, two that uh, it's very linked to this one. So here, in the, if in the challenge one we provided the the software for 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 retrieving this item into our warehouse, so here we need to provide the robotic platform where we need to install the software. So the the expected results is the software integration and link to this platform with the Voyex ecosystem. So. Um, also, the, the, the place to the place the items retrieved in the challenge one into the box that will be on the robot, uh, retrieve uh, the items, the, the challenge one, and of course safety, uh, the safety performance. So the main challenge here are the that the, that the software developed in the change uh, in the challenge one uh, should be integrated in this robotic platform. So we are looking for a for a manufacturer or. A, or a couple of robotic partner who could provide this uh, robotic uh, platform for install the, the software developed in the challenge one. So also consider that the integration of the technologies needed, uh, that, that this robotic platform needs to integrate the technologies needed for the for the development of the challenge one. Uh, at the moment I foresee uh, the 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 end effectors identifying the gestures that probably will be LIDAR or or stereoscopic or whatever camera do, that do you want to use for the detection of the gestures for the object detection uh, so you will need some kind of device that you also need to install into the robot like a rfdfi sensor a code bar reader and also of course we need to to provide the r the gripper and the loader uh, just to 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 to, go, to use it to call it the, the item here the budget is 80,000 uh, euros, so 30, 30, uh, the, the, between 30 and uh, 40,000 euros will be devoted to integration and the development. From 20 and 30,000 euros will be devoted to equipment. So 20, 25,000 euros will be uh, devoted to the real, uh, to, to the demonstration in, in, in a real environment. So the duration of the of this project will be six months. Uh, consider that this project will start in the month four or the month five of the challenge one, because uh, you need to to install the, the software that already developed in the challenge one, and we foresee also an extra month if needed for the demonstration. Again, here I have to say that the only SMEs and mid caps are eligible, and um, and that's all. So please you, feel, feel free to to, uh, to ask any question in the chat. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we will continue with the challenge three. Um, Lavek? Sure. Okay. Uh, can, thank you, Luisa. I can share the screen or if you prefer to share. Yes, you can share the screen, please. Okay.
Okay, uh, thank you, Luisa. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sławomir Buchalski, and uh, uh, during this webinar, together with uh, my colleague Agnieszka Spońska, uh, we are representing Industrial Research Institute uh, of Automation and Measurement, PIAP, uh, which is a part of uh, na Nationwide Research Network, uh, Łukasiewicz. Uh, okay, so uh, let me give you a quick introduction uh, to assumption of uh, challenge three, which is, uh, as you can see, the graphical overlay design designed for uh, core uh, UE. Uh, okay, so uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, the main purpose of uh, the presented challenge would be uh, to develop and uh, provide a layout uh, of controls and graphic design uh, for the operator's console uh, of emerging uh, project system. Um, as we know, uh, this was mentioned uh, before, the project covers uh, use cases from uh, the various fields of industry, uh, which means that the graphical interface, uh, in addition to such features as uh, ergonomics and clarity, should be characterized by flexibility of use. And uh, what is uh, worth highlight at this point are the basic requirements, uh, which are mentioned here at, the, at this line. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, the GUI, the graphic user interface concept, should be uh, developed with respect to uh, requested user experience and ergonomics. Um, and as you can see, uh, it should be also compatible with uh, with uh, Google Material Design concept. Um, as you can see, that the next uh, points are become more and more details uh, describing. Uh, uh, delivery formats and uh, methods, uh, but uh, the, the most important is uh, that uh, most of these will be, uh, of course, confirmed and uh, at the beginning of the works with uh, future contractor. Uh, as for the more details, uh, more detailed description, uh, um, uh, including uh, requirements for the gra graphical interface uh, and uh, shape of the expected design, of course, it can be found uh, in the document guidelines for applicants, so uh, it's worth to check it there. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, okay, so uh, now a few words about the implementation phase in general. Um, in, in the course of work, it's necessary to uh, to, to conduct workshop, uh, workshops with uh, future users of the system uh, in order to benefit from their experience and take into account their needs. That that's for sure. Um, the the partial results and uh, results and uh, uh, process uh, will be uh, recurrently evaluated and eventually presented for the final user and consortium for evaluation. Um, yeah, the, and the expected period of cooperation uh, uh, lasting six months, it will last six months with uh, um, an allocated budget of uh, 60,000 euros. Okay, next one, please. As for uh, expected outcomes, uh, the contractor should deliver um, a concept design for final um, uh, projects, the GUI, uh, which is uh, a general, uh, which in general means uh, several visual representations of uh, proposed design. Um, it should be also a, a graphic user interface architecture design, uh, which includes uh, which will include a, a proposed structure and uh, layout of the menus, as well as, uh, for example, uh, transitions between uh, the levels, etc. And uh, the graphic uh, overlay uh, description for or um, uh, graphic user interface with source files, of course. Uh, that means uh, that the layout design and all components of the um, graphic user interface, such as GUI menus and, and checkboxes, etc. Uh, what is very important is that um, the graphic overlay uh, description should allow software generation of uh, graphic user interface elements. Uh, so, so. Uh, Let's say it like that. Uh, uh, that uh, the, numer the numeric description uh, of each 
a graphic user interface element will be needed to to uh, to use uh, for the for the creation of the uh, of the menus and and uh, graphic design uh, in a later in a, in a later phases of the project. Uh, so in the end, uh, the overall goal is uh, to have uh, a GUI as much user friendly and uh, intuitive as possible. Um, yeah, so I believe that uh, regarding the challenge three, it's uh, all from uh, my side. Uh, of course, uh, room, if you would like to ask something, please use chat and uh, uh, yeah, w w I will be there for you then. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tarek. I suggest to continue directly with uh, the challenge four and five, Miguel. Okay, yeah, I can go with it. I can show your slide. If... That's that's fine. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Miguel Cantero. I'm a R&D project manager for robotic automation. Uh, we are a company based in Valencia, in Spain, and we are manufacturing robots. Uh, this is mainly our part in, in Boyex. We are also in charge of the lower level controllers. And uh, in this case, uh, specifically in the open calls, we have proposed these two challenges. Uh, the first one is uh, on these uh, clean rooms and clean environments. Uh, uh, yeah, please, uh, next one. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, the main objective of this uh, specific use case is to promote a system integrator that can actually access, uh, also deploy solutions, and also offer technologies in uh, these different use cases for pharma, medical, or different industrial domains. But uh, all of them need to be uh, yeah, in common that uh, some kind of clear room is is used to this use case, uh, and then. Yeah, this specific objective for this challenge is to adapt different uh, existing technologies to uh, different challenges in this domain. Actually, what we want to do is to uh, try to export what we already have in the, in the Voyage solutions uh, to use them in, in this specific environment, uh, in this kind of clean rooms. Uh, in this case, we are also focusing in uh, uh, one of the solutions uh, that Boyes is, is uh, bringing into action, which is this uh, mobile manipulator. So we are also considering different teleoperation, uh, yeah, different uh, ways of actuating this uh, this robot uh, in order to always try to get some benefit from it. Uh, and specifically in this kind of uh, clean room environment, what we want is to actually yeah, be able to keep uh, some humans out, uh, not, not really exposing them. And then also just trying to contribute to this uh, more clean environment. Uh, yeah, and uh, actually this solution is not really developed for this kind of environment. So we uh, expect that these kind of adaptations are provided by the, by the incoming uh, company that is uh, yeah, applying for this challenge. The different adaptations uh, to this kind of a Boyex uh, robotic vehicle, it's, uh, yeah, need to be fulfilling different requirements to operate in this kind of clean room. So we expect that uh, the applicants have some knowledge about uh, the specific uh, yeah, regulation and the specific requirements that you need to comply with in this kind of environment. So. Yeah, we expect also this company to identify, to develop different uh, solutions, to adapt them to this prototype. And uh, yeah, more or less, this is what what the challenge is consisting of. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, actually, the expected outcomes in this in this case uh, is this kind of a study on the requirements. Like, um, yeah, we would like to actually report this uh, in order to just uh, give the next step for this technology to be applied in the by this technology, I mean the Boyes technology, and in this case, the mobile manipulator and all the different uh, environment that we have developed into Boyes. So we want to actually have this kind of study on the requirements, the challenges and the constraints that the clean rooms are uh, just uh, bringing uh, into action here. Uh, yeah, we, we want also to check different solutions if they are there, uh, how 
uh, robots are already working in this kind of environment uh, and uh, yeah, we want the applicant to propose the different adaptations in order that this uh, solution is also capable to work in, in this environment. Um, yeah, that's why we want to specifically focus in this kind of existing uh, mobile robots. Uh, we will adopt uh, actually the RV Kairos uh, robot in this case. Uh, yeah, in, the, in the previous slide, you kind of uh, checked uh, uh, one of these robots. Uh, we will also see one uh, later on. Uh, but yeah, we want to have this kind of a study, like a really a thorough study on the requirements, uh, how this uh, robot operation would affect these critical indicators, uh, and then some kind of uh, parameter factors. We want to, every kind of uh, detail to be given here. So how can we reduce these airborne particles? Uh, how we will be uh, just uh, challenging this kind of heat dissipation? Uh, you know also that the yeah, the actual friction is, is really important in this kind of environments because you are just generating different particles that are uh, yeah, really harm, harming this environment. So we want to, to have all of this in mind. Uh, what we expect also is to have a, some kind of a subsystem prototypes adapted to the technology, uh, which is actually complying with the standards. Um, yeah, here we are talking about the 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 actual ISO uh, fourteen. Uh, well, it's a uh, one four six four four, which is this uh, clean room regulation, and. Uh, we want to propose this kind of prototypes, but also to have a kind of hands-on work into the uh, cleaning devices, any kind of uh, refrigeration that is proposed here, any kind of envelope that it's adapted for the robot to be entering these clean rooms. And uh, yeah, also these subsystem prototypes are something that we expect to have uh, as an outcome from the, from the challenge. And then uh, we should have also this kind of implementation plan on yeah, how this actual robot will be operating into the, the clean environment. Yeah, I think that's it for this one. Uh, you will be able to find more information about the financial uh, stuff and how to apply, apply uh, later on. But then, yeah, I will go directly to this challenge five, methodology and reconstruction. Uh, yeah, text, please. Well, uh, again, here we are focusing somehow in the technology that uh, well, our company is providing to the Boyext uh, project uh, and then uh, everything that we are developing into the project. Uh, in this case, we want to explore uh, some synergies of uh, yeah, different uh, technologies and applications uh, using some, uh, well, methodology applications, using some LIDARs, cameras, any other sensor that is already working here. Uh, and uh, well, actually, it's been a kind of trendy to mount these kind of uh, devices into robotic arms, just to cover more space, uh, to approach uh, the different parts uh, to be inspected in the different uh, orientations and from different positions. And uh, what we want to do here, uh, actually, it's, it's something that we think it's a, it's a really interesting is to to have uh, the mobile uh, manipulator in this case again. Uh, the RV Kairos, uh, which we are using the Voyage project, uh, to, to just uh, mount these kind of devices and uh, work in this uh, in this application, uh, but also with this added value of uh, moving the platform around and just having a lot of, uh, well, more degrees of freedom in, in, into this case. Uh, actually, the, the thing is uh, we are envisioning here is to, to just apply a different end effector, which in this case is the inspection device. Next, please. Okay, so here, uh, what we expect uh, as an outcome is, uh, again, a report, considering the working cycle, what kind of uh, well, different insights of, of the technology, how you are already using this technology for theory reconstruction, for uh, uh, metrology, for quality inspection, uh, for all of these different, uh, well, uh, use cases that uh, we can come uh, Come up uh, from these uh, from these synergies of the technologies. Uh, how these adaptations, if any, is needed for this joint work is uh, actually we we expect that uh, uh, yeah, like uh, if this is uh, something that uh, we can mount directly into the 
el robotic arm and the mobile manipulator uh, we expect also that uh, to think a little bit on how the robot should move uh, all these uh, trajectories uh, all the work that is needed to to just make it work as a as a as an integrated solution uh, if uh, there is some kind of software or interface that is already working with the device uh, we also expect to just have a, a minimum degree of integration here but uh, all of this should be also stated in our implementation plan and uh, yeah we will uh, hopefully we will evaluate uh, different interesting proposals for you uh, but uh, yeah any kind of uh, specifically if there's an implementation plan what can be de uh, delivered uh, within the the actual open call and maybe even some kind of further improvements uh, in the in the life plan of the solution so that's uh, interesting for us uh, yeah we would also like to to just uh, again have some kind of hands on into working subsystems like uh, with the lighters cameras any kind of uh, technology that it's uh, uh, just uh, delivered by you and how to yeah, perform these expected activities and then if there's some kind of a graphical interface at least to just have the minimum here to, to just uh, integrate the solution and uh, it is also here very important to have a demonstration of the project. if we can have all of this uh, that would be perfect uh, i saw some question about the uh, in the chat about uh, using like a yeah already available products yeah i think uh, i think that's uh, that's perfectly doable to just mount specific uh, products that are already in the market but uh, what we want to make here is just to integrate all of this uh, just to have a like a different solution which is in this case okay the the reconstruction the uh, the uh, methodology uh, solution but then mounted into a mobile manipulator that can just move around and just gain some benefit from from it so i guess the answer is yes uh, yeah i think that was my last slide right thank you Luisa. if there's some additional yes. question you, that I didn't see. okay okay thank you so again uh, if there is question do not hesitate to write in the chat so the technical partner are here and so it's the opportunity to to get concrete answer uh so we will continue with the uh, last but not least challenge uh the challenge six about uh, machine learning based on material characterization. Um, I saw that Okan had some difficulties to join. I don't know, Okan, are you here or Xenia? No, I am in the line. So okay. could you get my voice? Yes. Okay, I have two accounts. With one so, of them, I will present my screen. With the others, I will speak in parallel. Okay, do, do you want me to share the, yeah, the perfect. screen? Perfect, it, it will be perfect, yeah. Perfect. Let me know when you. Yep. Yeah, okay. I can briefly introduce myself. Okay. My name is Okanotus. I have been working as a mechanical simulation and digital twin engineer at Mercedes Benz Group for 10 years approximately. So, in parallel, I have been taking the responsibility of EU projects. Uh, so, based on projects, uh, what we are seeking from Open Call, uh, we have many automotive side parts. Imagine that as Mercedes-Benz Turk, we have been producing buses and trucks in Turkey. Uh, and most of the parts have been produced by using plastics and composites. So it means that we should look in the material, not as steel and aluminum, because they behave isotropic, but also we should go inside anisotropic material behavior. In order to accomplish that, we have to use machine learning uh, and AI-based algorithms to enhance, to illuminate what happens inside the plastic and composite uh, production process. So this is the idea, more or less. As you can see on this page, on the first page, uh, there is one phenomena based on material characterization. So materials should be defined based on their locations. Each location on one component, even it is on the same component, or even they are neighbor, they behave differently uh, from a mechanical point of view. From Young's modulus, from Poisson's ratio, shear modulus, etc., they behave mostly different. That is why we need to use some, uh, first the DOE, we should understand what kind of material flow inside, and then we should eliminate, we should collect data 
data will be collected in any case. Uh, and those data should be eliminated by using this uh, training model. The data will be thread trained and at last we will use this trained data in digital twin model. So mechanical simulation model uh, on buses and trucks. It means that this open call product, let's say software, will be embedded into the software of Mercedes-Benz Turk at the end. So this is the uh, main aim. Could you please come to the next page? Yep, uh, we have three main targets. Firstly, up to 10% lightweight will be aimed because when finding the defect potentials, uh, we will be able to eliminate raw material usage. The target is decreasing the weight of the total amount up to 10%. Secondly, minimum three defects should be determined in one component. This is the second target. And lastly, approximately 12, 10, 12 percentage save of raw material uh, because while finding the damages, damage potentials before we produce the component, so we will have a big chance to save the material usage. Uh, so in the first month, data collection from production process will be uh, handled. Uh, within the second month, machine learning and AI, AI algorithm will be developed by using collected data. In the third phase, within two months, this data should be matched with CAE model. CAE means digital twin mechanical simulation, what I meant before. And at last, we will validate by using physical tests. So first the data collection, then machine learning development, algorithm development, matching with CE, and at last validating the results with physical tests. Uh, so this will be the end of this open goal. Uh, this is somehow one uh, edition, so you can find also one uh, presentation, some slides uh, to have uh, some more images. This is uh, one plastic injection process. As you can see, plastic injection process has a couple of uh, steps. Each, steps. each step represents their own material characteristics because imagine that this plastic uh, begin with very uh, fluid element and at last it become uh, one viscose element. So this plasticity viscosity should also be detected at the end. Uh, yeah, could you come to the next? No, okay, this is the last page. Uh, so the main point is plastic injection. Uh, there are two options of materials, uh, pure plastic without any glass fiber and with glass fiber. So these two material combinations uh, will be processed within this open call. Uh, these are uh, more or less the whole sentences of mine. Uh, if you have any questions, I can gladly answer them. Thank you very much, Okan, and thank you to all Thanks. for the presentation of uh, these challenges. Uh, looking at the time, um, I suggest to continue directly with a, with, a, with a presentation of the procedure, this time with uh, Luisa from F6S, and then we will uh, have the question and cessation. So, Luisa. Okay, thank you, Luisa. And uh, I introduce myself. So, I'm Luisa Gonçalves from F6S. So, we are partners in Voyex, and I'm working with the Open Call. Actually, we are responsible for managing the Open Call uh, end to end. So, since the beginning until the the the, the final uh, outcomes of the the third part projects. So, next slide, please. So um, I will I will summarize here our open calls. Actually, we we are um, issuing uh, two open calls. Uh, the first one was last year, and uh, you you as mentioned before, uh, we were very successful with uh, all the projects and the outcomes. And now the second open call is open, so we are receiving applications currently, and this open call aims to 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 extend 
the capacity and technology by, by integrating the, the SMEs, the third parts infrastructures to, to VOIAT infrastructure and also to, to deploy and uh, small scale pilots to, to expand the scope of, of the, the existing use cases. And uh, since this project has started in 2020, uh, we have now uh, more mature solutions that need to be, to be not only tested, but also uh, to, 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 to find an opportunity to expand this scope. So next slide, please. Uh, here you can see, uh, I'm not going to, to extend a lot here because uh, the, the, the partners has already pre have already presented the, the challenges and then some details, but here you can see a summary that we are uh, uh, addressing uh, six specific challenges uh, on, on cognitive robotics. So um, and the duration here varies a lot from, from three months. Uh, with challenge two, for example, until seven to eight months. Uh, I usually consider here eight months because uh, maybe uh, uh, some some uh, period for testing and also for demonstrating the outcomes. Uh, it will be it will be necessary and also the funding varies here, but uh, the 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 maximum funding is uh, eight uh, eight thousand euros. So next slide. So I, I will give you here some some uh, uh, an overview of, of our framework because uh, we we follow a, a general framework here since since the the first open call so it will be the same uh, it starts here with uh, the application uh, in in uh, in the platform F six S platform I I'm going through this process uh, later on. But first of all, you need to apply and you need to, 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 to explain uh, what are you, you proposing. Uh, so after the period of, of submissions, uh, your proposal will be evaluated by our, our technical partners. And uh, this evaluation uh, consists of three stages that I'm going also to uh, into details later on. And if you are selected, uh, you will sign a contract with, with the consortium uh, in order to, to implement you, your project. So you can see here the indication that uh, this time for this call, uh, the, the implementation project will be uh, split on, on two sprints uh, and the, the period varies according to, to, the, to the challenge. So next, please. So uh, now uh, here I will give you an overview, a very practical overview on how to apply. So next, Lisa. Uh, first of all, uh, before the submission, uh, because here is very important for you to, to read the documents that, that we make available on, on the website. Uh, because you, you can see, for example, we follow uh, a, a lot of different rules according to, to the European Commission um, uh, determination. So we here uh, have, for example, you need to, to go uh, on the website first and then uh, there uh, in, uh, on the web page, there will be a, a dedicated web page for the open call. So you will find uh, different documents. So the, the, the main documents here for you to, to understand and to check the rules and to check if the opportunity fits to, to, your, to your goals, uh, is the guide for applicants. So there you will find, for example, the eligibility criteria uh, and the, the type of applicants and the different information will be there for you. Uh, so in this call, for example, the target applicants are only SMEs and mid, and mid caps with a valid VIT. Uh, so from, from European countries, uh, and here is important to, to highlight that we uh, accept not only uh, uh, Europe, uh, European Union members, but also some uh, associated countries. So in this document, you find the links to, to the European uh, Commission page where uh, you will find the list of countries that are eligible. Uh, for example, uh, the, in this document, you find the details of each challenge uh, from a technical perspective. Uh, so you find the, the details, the context, the requirements, 
the technical requirements to address each challenge and also the the fundings uh, and the, the 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 funding distribution uh, it's very and also the timeline the program duration so what's coming next uh, after you you get selected uh, to 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 address the challenges so uh, the documents here are very important here uh, we you can find three documents as i mentioned the most important one is the guide for applicants the open call text is also important because there you find a summary of the project. Uh, it's, it's an overview of the project and an overview of the open call in a very summarized way. And also the proposal supplement that is a mandatory document that you are going to upload to your application form. But I will explain this document later on. So next, please. Uh, so. Uh, we, we, we now I gave you an overview uh, bef how to, to apply before the submission. So you need to read the document. So and to 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 apply, uh, you just need to um, go to the website of Voyage uh, that and there, as I mentioned, you find a dedicated page with a link uh, to to the to the application form. So, um, and in this application form, there are, you only need to, to fill uh, all the questions in order to, to explain and to detail your, your proposal solution. And the, you need to, to upload two, two documents. So the first one is not a mandatory document and the second one is a mandatory. So after uh, this, um, uh, we, we usually uh, perform an eligibility filter here. Uh, in order just to check uh, if you are eligible in terms of country, if you are from an eligible countries, if you follow the rules for the target applicants. And uh, it's a very simple filter uh, before uh, the proposal uh, advancing uh, to the evaluation. So next. Uh, here it's just uh, uh, since I, I've been receiving a lot of questions about uh, what kind of documents applicants should upload on the on the application form. The first one is an experiment schema or a pitch of your solution and company. It's a very small document, uh, five pages maximum, so it's not a text document, it's just a PDF or or a PNG or a JPEG in order to just for us to understand and to uh, and for you to illustrate your solution as i mentioned uh, this is not mandatory this is an optional uh, document but uh, i fully recommend that uh, uh, you do that uh, just for for the evaluators will be easier to understand what are you proposing so next one uh, this second one is mandatory, so I will explain you why this document, the proposal supplement, is so important. Because uh, here you will uh, add uh, the, the the a cost overview of your solution. So it's uh, it's very very important for us to to check uh, if you are able uh, to 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 address the challenge uh, according to to the budget. To the, the indicative budget so evaluators will check if your solution if your proposal is feasible in terms of costs uh, for example for if you declare that your solution uh, will cost uh, 500k euros uh, so it would be impossible so that's why it's very important that you include here uh, the the cost uh, and the, the justification for your cost because evaluators will check this and we have an evaluation criteria for this. Uh, and uh, the second table, uh, the deliverable name it, uh, and uh, the short description of deliverables and the costs, is it's very important for us to see how you can distribute your costs and if you have a, a, a plan and you if you have a project structured, because it's, it's, it will be important for evaluations to check how you are going to implement this. Uh, you will have a question in the form about this, uh, the deliverables and milestones, but here it would be very important that you relate these deliverables and this, uh, all these activities to the costs that you are declaring. Uh, in the in the, the beginning of the, the, the support program, you, you have the chance to, to adapt and to adjust 
the deliverables according to the discussions that you are going to have with our technical partners, partners. but during the application, it's very important to have this overview uh, that in, in, in order to evaluate and of course to use this information during the program. So next please. So here I'm going to, through the evaluation stage. Uh, the evaluation state is, is a, a, a simple, pro, a simple uh, process. Uh, it's divided into three stages. It started uh, with a remote evaluation that, that we call. Uh, so the technical partners from the consortium will check your proposal and uh, according to, to, to an evaluation criteria. And you can also find all the details of the evaluation in the guide for applicants. So we usually uh, check the innovation and excellence, uh, impact, uh, value, and the project implementation. So then if uh, accepted, you will advance, your proposal will advance to, to uh, an online interview. So you will be invited to, to uh, a short interview with uh, the technical partners in order for them to, to go into details with uh, uh, the, the solution that you are proposing, because maybe some aspects could cannot be clear in the application form. So it's uh, very important to, to have this uh, interview. And then uh, if OK, uh, your proposal will be on the on the table for a consensus meeting boarding, because sometimes we receive uh, a lot of applications and, and uh, we have some very good applications, but we need to get a consensus on uh, which um, uh, proposals we will advance to, to, to the deployment phase. Uh, so uh, it, if selected, you are going to advance to the legal stage. So next, please. This legal stage, uh, it, uh, it's a, a pre-selection, so uh, the technical partners uh, agreed that uh, that proposal should advance. So uh, we, we, we are going to, to sign a contract uh, with, with the, the SMEs and the, the third parties. So this is a very uh, uh, a legal stage in which that uh, you will sign the contract. We, we, you are going to add some uh, different documents to, to this uh, to this contract and uh, it's the moment for for double, a double check phase and, uh, and also to provide a bank account information for example and uh, this in, during this process uh, you interact with UPM that are the also the coordinators of the project and they are the they are the treasurers and the contractors so uh, next please so here I, I'm just going to show you that we have uh, uh, the templates on the website. It's just uh, for your information. You don't need to 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 fill anything. Uh, you, you just can go there and visualize the documents that you are going uh, to sign uh, during the, the the legal states. That is the declaration of honor, the declaration and information on SME qualifications, and the sub grant agreement templates. We have these uh, documents all there. Uh, in all, just in case you'd like to see when, what to expect if, if uh, your proposal uh, is selected. So next, please. So uh, after the call, uh, very, very quickly, uh, we, uh, we, 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 we have um, uh, some, some guidance and of course some support to, to address uh, the, the challenge and deploy the project. So the consortium partners, uh, some consortium partners will be allocated according to each challenge to, to help you and to support you. Uh, we also have some follow-up meetings and, uh, for example, and different meetings according to the necessity with, with the, the companies uh, in order to support you. And, uh, and the, the challenge for M5, uh, we have the opportunity to test and integration of solutions in, in uh, robotic facilities in Valencia, Spain. So at the end of the, 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 the project, uh, the companies will participate in a, in a demonstration event uh, where you have the, the, they will have the opportunity to, 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 to show and to demonstrate 
for all the consortium and for the European Commission, uh, the, the results and the, the achieved. So uh, next, please. And here is just a very, very quick uh, explanation about the payment scheme. And so after each sprint, uh, the company will prepare a deliverable report and this deliverable report will be approved by 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 will be checked and approved by the the technical um, uh, partner and uh, if it's okay the payment will be made according accordingly so um in this in the first sprint uh, after the first sprint we pay 40 percent of the funding and after the second sprint we pay six percent of the, the funding since i've been receiving a lot of questions about this uh seven percent rules I included here some examples that uh, although we inform uh, a total amount, a, li a limited uh, funding, uh, VOEX will fund up to 7% of this funding. So, and I give you here some example that uh, later on you can also check in the, the guide for applicants because all the explanation about this is there. So next, please. And here again, uh, just to remind you that uh, for us to, to, to proceed and to advance with the payment, and since uh, the values are varies a lot according to each challenge, it's very important that you fill and upload the, the proposal supplement. Otherwise, your, your application will not be considered uh, um, eligible to, to advance to the evaluation. So don't forget to, to upload this document because it's very important not only for the evaluation but on also after uh, the, um, the the during the program uh, next please so just here is just a brief uh, explanation about the timeline uh, you will uh, we we will start the the support program in march since we have an evaluation period and the contracting phase and the final event we expect to 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 make it in October of uh, 2023. Uh, you can also find all this information in the guide for applicants as well. Uh, next, so just to wrap up here, uh, the the maximum funding is 8k. Uh, the target applicants are SMEs and mid caps, and the deadline is uh, on in one month. So you still have one month to to apply. So next, please. So uh, don't miss uh, this opportunity. So it's a very good opportunity for, for companies to come and to test their solution and also to get involved in, in different perspectives uh, in this, uh, in the, in this uh, topic and context. So uh, more information to apply, uh, uh, go to our website and uh, you also can send us emails with questions. I have been receiving uh, some of them, so uh, we'll be glad to, to answer you. So uh, that's it thank from my side, Luisa. Thank you very much, Luisa, and thank you to all. I see the people starting to leave, and I really want to, to address the questions. So I will uh, stop sharing my screen because I cannot access the question, if not. And then I will ask all the the speakers to to join, and we will have a look on the questions. So if if you see, because I need to see the question before, if you already uh, targeted some questions and that you can address them, uh, do not hesitate. For the challenge, I guess we have some. Uh, there is one question here, Lisa, uh, in yeah. the chat. Um, how do you recommend the open call one participants to participate in this open call two? Uh, I'm not sure you. if I understood the question, but uh, probably if the open call one participants could participate in the second open call. Uh, no, it's not eligible. Uh, so. Um, we we need to give some more uh, opportunities for for different companies. So um, it's an, an European Commission rule, and uh, 
companies could not also uh, uh, apply again because uh, one company could not be um, funded by 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 one single project. So it's a it's an Euro, in a rule from European Commission, and you can also find this rule in the guide for applicants. Thank you, Luisa. I think the first one also was related to uh, another participation in IFO and Cascade funding, but uh, what you described it more related to projects, yeah? So it's projects open call first, cannot participate in the third open call, but... Yes, uh, sorry, Luisa, could you repeat? The first question was uh, last year, we have been beneficiary of one of the IFO and Cascade funding call, which awarded us a grant equal to credit ninety uh, k. Are we eg eligible to apply for Vojex Open Code two? Uh, so let me check if I understood. So the company was awarded uh, in a, in another call from another project. Is that correct? Is what I understand. Yeah. Yes, it's okay. He can participate. Uh, he can participate from from uh, if. Uh, the company is awarded from a different call from a different project. Uh, he can he can apply to Voex perfectly. Uh, the main the the, the 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 company cannot apply again for the for two open calls in the same project. That's that's the the issue. So, but if the the calls are different and projects are different, they can apply. Thank you. Then there is a question about the technical documentation about Vojex robots. Uh, Miguel, I think this is for you. And you started to answer. Yeah, actually, yeah. it was okay. I was raising that uh, there are some uh, dimensional drawings and some uh, basic information about the actual uh, yeah commercial solution that we already have in the portfolio, which is the the Arbicairo solution. I already passed, uh, pasted the, the link here, uh, just to to remind that uh, okay, we we have adapted somehow the the prototype to the to the actual voice spirit, and uh, we have changed a little bit on the API and so on. Uh, also, some uh, most of the robots that we are delivering for the voice spirit are just adapted to the actual use case, so it is not exactly the same robot, but uh, yeah, the basics are the same. So I already pasted this here. Not sure how can I also forward this information, like a further information on the on the robot, uh, yeah, uh, to the to the possible applicants. But uh, I think that there are some links there. Right? Did I answer already? Oh, that's this. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if uh, if some kind of uh, technical information is is needed, also I think uh, there are some like uh, ways to actually ask for it. Uh, I already answered some questions uh, that Luisa was forwarding me, so just uh, feel free to, to just ask. Okay. Uh, there is a question regarding the core AP API API. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, Luisa. I believe it's uh, devoted to. Uh, to challenge three, <clears throat> yeah, um, answering that, uh, I think that the best way will be to uh, take it that way. Um, it's not entirely ready. Uh, we are uh, uh, finishing uh, the works over it. Some details need to be uh, fixed, but uh, yeah, I think that uh, in, a, in the next weeks, uh, will be um, um, ready in in this one. So yeah, I hope that's that's uh, uh, that's answer for now. Okay, thank you. I don't know if you can hear me. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, uh, we had an open call a, a few months ago. Uh, I hope we won't repeat the, the same scenario. It was a similar proposal. It was not with the UI. Uh, with, it was another type of challenge. And uh, the API of the, the core API was uh, published one day before the submission deadline. So, oh. <laughs> uh, if uh, if you think it might be the case, or even one week before the submission deadline, I think we won't be able to provide the quality uh, quality 
let's say, project proposal. It is uh, by chance that uh, we are, uh, I'm working with uh, with a partner company uh, for uh, unmanned vehicle on a rough terrain, and we will need to develop something uh, similar. So we will benefit quite a lot from this experience if uh, it will be the case to cooperate, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it's really good to hear that uh, you've got some experience in that field. Um, well, uh, I'm sorry that <clears throat> that's, that that thing happened. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. It it could be tough. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, uh, it's uh, not the case. Uh, it w uh, will be okay if I contact you directly by LinkedIn or other means to ask you in one or two weeks if uh, how can we get the API. Yeah, I think that, uh, well, uh, basically, uh, about the contact, uh, maybe I would uh, pass the floor to Luisa to, um, because, yes. yeah. Yes, it's lovely. Uh, maybe you can get in touch with that email that I mentioned, mm -hmm. the open call at Vuex, and then I can uh, redirect your, 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 or okay. your uh, question to the technical team. Okay, great, great. I, I thought that would be uh, the scenario. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I think there is a last one, for, uh, one question regarding of, at the time, we, we may not have more. Um, a question for you, I think, Luisa, can an eligible SME subcontract outsource another company or organization for some of the tasks needed to achieve the goal of the challenge? Yes, yes. Uh, the question, the, the answer is yes, you can subcontract or outsource another company, but since it's a lump sum, we do not control what you are going to do with your funding. The, the only thing that is necessary for, for the legal stage and from a legal perspective, uh, the company, the SMEs uh, that is applying will be responsible for all the activities and we need a legal person from, from the SME that is applying for. So, uh, if you need to subcontract uh, for for to to address any issue uh, during the program, it, it would be okay. But the SME, the applicant SME, is still responsible and uh, from a legal perspective. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you very much uh, to all. I don't see additional question. Uh, I hope we provided you with uh, technical and, and all the information about how to, to apply to uh, this uh, open call. If there is additional question, of course, there's uh, the, the, the email that has been uh, shared already. Uh, do not hesitate to write uh, to this email and uh, to reach us also on the different uh, um, social uh, media network. Um, I don't know if there is other comments from the speakers. If no, I think uh, we can conclude here this uh, info session webinar. I hope it was useful. And uh, thank you. Thank you to all for your participation. Luisa, I just added the email here in okay. the chat if uh, someone would like to reach out to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Luisa.